Welcome back to Million Cockapoo. In the past I've done videos on why you should and why you shouldn't get a cockapoo. So today I thought I'd do a video on why I chose to get a cockapoo as I thought it might help some of you if you're still um and anarian about if they're the right breed for you or not. <laughs> video yes Millie is wearing a jumper and that's just because we've got back from a very cold walk and she was shivering so I put this jumper on her it's from Bark and Tumble I'm not sure if they do it anymore but I will link their website down below and if they do that one I will still link it as a bit of background some breeds that I absolutely love are German Shepherds, Huskies, Dalmatians, Cocker Spaniels, Cavalier King Charles Spaniels and Old English Sheepdogs but when I started doing my research onto what breed was right for me it quickly became apparent that none of those were going to be suitable for me. So my first requirement when looking for a dog was that I wanted one that wasn't too big and wasn't too small. So I've got a quite a decent sized garden but my house isn't that big so I didn't really want any dog that was going to be too big or feel like they took up too much space in the house. On the other hand, I didn't want a dog that was going to be too small as I wanted to be able to take them out for long walks and ideally be able to train them to go running with me up to about 10k. This meant I needed a dog that enjoyed doing exercise but at the same time I didn't want a breed that required two hours plus of exercise every day but I wanted them to be able to do that level of walking at the weekends. So therefore I was looking at medium sized dogs. The next big factor for me was ideally I wanted a dog that was either hypoallergenic or was a low shedder. This is because I suffer from eczema and in the past it's flared up around dogs or where there's been dog hair. With the fact of the exercise and needing a dog that wasn't too big or too small, really narrowed down what breeds I could go for and pretty much eliminated all of my favourite breeds <laughs> that I've previously mentioned. And when looking into which dogs were hypoallergenic, poodles came up a lot because they are hypoallergenic. But for me, poodles just wasn't the right breed. Now, I don't want to offend anyone with the next point because I know we can get quite controversial about mixed breeds and pure breeds. But based on all the research that I did, it was saying that pure breeds tended to be more prone to illnesses and lifelong diseases because of the nature of them being bred over the years whereas mixed breeds tend to not be as prone to different diseases or breed specific diseases. I know it varies from pup to pup and cross breeds can still get diseases and are still prone to some diseases but based on all the research I did it showed that crossbreeds tended to be healthier than pure breeds which then made me go down the crossbreed route and a lot of research was suggesting go for a breed mixed with a poodle as they would have a greater likelihood of them being hypoallergenic and not shedding. This then led me to looking at breeds such as a Labradoodle, a Golden Doodle, a Sheepadoodle, a Cockapoo and a Cavapoo. Then pretty early on I ruled out a Labradoodle and a Golden Doodle just based on the size because I thought it would be a bit too big for me. So then I was looking at a Sheepadoodle, a Cockapoo and a Cavapoo. Now if you don't know what a Sheepadoodle is then it's an Old English Sheepdog crossed with a Poodle. Now I've got a soft spot for Old English Sheepdogs because we had one when I was a kid. He was called Rollo. I will insert a picture of me and him there. But in the UK, Old English Sheepdogs are now incredibly rare. And because of how rare they are, they cost a fortune. And when people are breeding them, they tend to just breed with other Old English Sheepdogs to keep the line going. So you don't ever, well, I have never seen a sheepadoodle for sale in the UK. The, all the adverts that I was looking at were all in America. Any pups that I found that were sheepadoodles were all American. So yeah, I think it's just a breed that doesn't really exist here in England yet. And also I think looking back, they wouldn't have been the right dog for me because they would have ended up being of similar size to a golden doodle. 
which I just think would have been a bit too big. So then I was left with a cavapoo and a cockapoo. And honestly, they are very similar. When looking at all the research, they are pretty much identical. And that's probably because they're a poodle mixed with a spaniel breed. But the cavapoo tends to be slightly smaller because the King Charles Spaniel is smaller than the cockapoo. And they tend to be a bit more of a lap dog, just because again, the Cavalier King Charles is a lap dog and isn't like they like exercise, but they don't really love it. Whereas a cockapoo has a lot more energy, tends to be slightly bigger, and that's because of the cocker spaniel heritage of the working dog. Also, at the time in my area, there was a lot more cockapoos over cavapoos, and cavapoos were a lot more expensive than cockapoos. Based on the energy levels, I'm pretty sure a cavapoo wouldn't ever be able to run with me. Whereas, it's still a work in progress with Millie. But we're getting there. We could do about a kilometre at the moment. If anybody has any tips on running with your dog, then please leave them down below because Millie's tendency is to either get distracted and be like, oh, I need to go and sniff something over there and then drag me or just step in front of me and then moan, well, cry when I stand on her by accident. I'm getting sidetracked now, but those are all the reasons that went into me deciding to get a cockapoo. And I did a lot of research before getting Millie and deciding that cockapoos were the right breed for me. And I'd highly recommend that you do the same. I don't regret getting a cockapoo at all. I found Millie pretty easy to train. Yes, the things that we're still working on and there were times that she's stubborn and there were always stuff that is more difficult for her. But in general, she picked up potty training easily and when we've been working on things, she's always picked up everything quite easily. I'd say she's quite low maintenance other than the grooming. So for a first time owner, I would highly recommend cockapoos if you're looking at getting them. I will leave links down below to other videos that I've done on cockapoos. So if you're looking at getting one yourself, go have a look down there. I will also link a playlist on our channel about cockapoos so you can carry on doing any research if you're in the research phase of looking to get a cockapoo. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up. If you don't already please subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. Also go and follow us on Instagram at Millie Cockapoo and along with your running tips if you have any Please also comment down below any videos that you would like to see and we will see you next week. Bye.